Hey guys, welcome to the Bookkeeper Basecamp podcast. This show is for virtual bookkeepers who are starting, growing, and scaling online bookkeeping businesses. I'm your host, Kimberly Stevenson. Let's dive in and see what we're talking about in today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome back for episode 34 of the Bookkeeper Basecamp podcast. This episode is dedicated to all of our listeners who are a bit newer to starting their virtual bookkeeping businesses. We've had so many episodes that speak to the challenges and questions that more experienced bookkeeper CEOs, and I really wanted to host an episode that helps our listeners who might be just starting out on the bookkeeper profit path. On this week's episode, my guest is Debbie White of Debbie White & Co., She's a girl mom of two beautiful little ones, and she runs her business full time while she also focuses on her family. Debbie is a systems and automations expert who helps service based businesses create better workflows and streamline their processes so they spend less time on the tech and more time actually serving their clients needs and they make more money. We cover some really interesting topics during this episode, like how to make big decisions in growing your business, how to ensure that you have clarity about what's happening in your business right now before you bring on new team members, and exactly what to do before you start creating systems in the first place, and how when you do this one thing up front, it'll save you a ton of time and a lot of headache down the road. Debbie runs her business using the agency model, and she has 16 members who help her serve her clients. The goal over at Debbie White & Co. is to help bookkeeper CEOs create the lifestyle that aligns with their personal vision, that gives them more energy, fulfillment, peace of mind, and time for doing what's most important to them. So even though she's not a virtual bookkeeper herself, her insights into scaling your business by growing a team are invaluable. Before we jump into my chat with Debbie, I want to make sure that I invite you to join us over in our free Facebook community dedicated to virtual bookkeepers who are starting growing and scaling their businesses. The group is easy to find because it happens to have the same name as the podcast. It's called the Bookkeeper Basecamp Facebook group. Go figure. It's super active and extremely welcoming. So wherever you are on your journey, there's something for you over in the community. All you have to do is search for Bookkeeper Basecamp on Facebook and you'll find us there. I hope you join us. Now, let's get into this chat with Debbie about how to create systems in your virtual bookkeeping business. Hey, Debbie, how are you? I am well. How are you, Kimberly? I am doing great. Doing great. Thank you so much for agreeing to spend some time with me and chatting on the podcast. I'm so glad we were finally able to connect. I'm super excited to be here today. I am. I'm I'm just glad to have you here as well. So we introduced you a bit kind of uh, before we before we actually uh, came into the recording. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to just tell our audience, tell our listeners about Debbie White, what it is that you do, how you show up and how you serve this particular community. So I, of course, I'm Debbie. Um, I am a girl mom of two and a serial entrepreneur at this point. So I worked in the corporate space before starting my business a little under two years ago. And the pandemic is actually what shifted me into the online space, into um, Debbie White & Co., which is previously the Virtual Mom Co. Um, So we started out, I just wanted to help other mompreneurs that were overwhelmed in their business, um, trying to figure out how to navigate the pandemic, having kids at home um, and still making an income. And so it turned out to be quite successful. And since then, we've grown and transitioned to Debbie White and Co., where we now help men and women. I love it. So you said you have two daughters? Two daughters. I love that. I have um, I have three grandbabies. My sons, my, my two sons are, are adults at this point. But I think to myself, if I had to be building a business with little ones at home, I... 
I can't even imagine what that must be like. Um, I know how difficult it was when I was dropping them off at daycare and going to a corporate job every day. But to think about the parents today who are trying to build their business with their kids in the next room, that just blows my mind. And so I'm always inspired, you know, when I hear those stories. So kudos to you for, for helping that community. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's a challenge, but it's one that I love. Um, I really started it because of safety, just not wanting to send them to daycare. Um, at some point, their daycare had shut down, and so it wasn't really an option. But since I've done it, I've really tapped back into my why, um, just why I went to college, why I wanted to have this career, and it was to provide for them. Um, and so just seeing them watch me grow is such an amazing thing and it's also given me the freedom to spend time with them so it's a lot having them pop in during zoom calls but it's a great thing to spend so much time with them um love it and have that luxury before i love it i love it and so you mentioned the transition that you made from uh the the previous set of the virtual mom uh company that you had and then moving into w white and co what was that like for you making that decision to make some, probably some challenging decisions in in your business. Uh, What was, what was that like going through that process? Um, The process was scary. It was scary because the decision came at a point where um, I realized that my little business was starting to grow more than I had anticipated. Um, Like I said, I, I just wanted to be able to take care of my children and keep them safe during the pandemic and clients just started to roll in and I realized, wow, we're really growing this thing. It's scaling pretty quickly. Um, So there were a lot of nerves. Uh, I knew I needed to make some tough decisions like hiring new people, um, cutting out people that weren't fit to grow with us, which was difficult, but we got through it and we are continuing to grow and I'm happy that I took the time um, to really sit with myself and figure out where we wanted to go and then trust myself enough to make it happen. So you, you said a mouthful there. And I asked that question for a reason because you being the workflow systems and automation specialist that you are, I wanted to really kind of, you know, let our listeners know that you've been exactly where we're going to, what we're going to talk about tonight, right. Or, or today on the recording. Um, and so most of, most of the folks that I'm working with right now, obviously are virtual bookkeepers. This is the bookkeeper base camp podcast, uh, but they're solopreneurs right now. And so they're having to make decisions about changes that they're seeing in their business as they're developing their business, they're growing their client roster. Um, they're getting ready to scale but so many of them right now are solopreneurs. And so I would love for you to share with um, our audience, what are some of the things that tend to come up when you when you think systems, automations, you know, people, um, a lot of times my clients tell me, I just, you know, go with the flow every day, whatever it comes my way, that's what I work on. But you're the specialist. Talk to me about what are some of the things that they should be thinking about on a regular basis? So I will say um, I was very lucky to go into business with having knowledge about systems and operations is what I do. Um, So that part I had, but each new level is going to require something different. Each new level is new. Um, So even for me, there were times where I was like, you know, what are we going to do with this thing? How are we going to automate and, and continue to make sure our systems are solid as we grow? And so one of the things that was helpful for, for me was making sure that I was solid before I brought anyone else on. Um, and I think a lot of business owners get into this, you know, I'm, I'm owning my business, it's just me, but you have to really think long term um, and think about what it would be like to bring other team members on, what experience are they going to have and what works for you might not work for them. So I really had to sit and say, Debbie, this is how we're running right now. But what would this look like with a virtual assistant? And you just start small, one one helper. Um, And as you grow, you keep asking those questions. Okay, what would it look like if we brought on two virtual assistants, a CPA, an attorney, um, and you go from there. 
But making sure that you have a solid system with yourself first is really important. And if you don't, I, I recommend waiting to hire until that happens. So you really have to, to stop and assess yourself. Is this efficient for me? And that's the question you have to ask. And, and that's so good because when I think about it, if you're doing, if you're just taking things as they come every day and going with the flow, so to speak, you're probably reinventing the wheel every time, you know, figuring out now, how do I start this? What's the next step? And then what's the next step? And then when you get to the end, you know, how do I tie it up with a, with what I like to call this pretty red bow? Or do I even, do I just leave these, you know, these things hanging and it's okay because nobody else is going to see it but me, right? right. So it's important to, to have that kind of CEO time is, you know, what, what I like to refer to it. And, and think about those things, right? So often what I share with, with clients is we're like in this head down, data entry, got to get the work done, you know, operations, 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 get the tech stuff, you know, in every month. And we never take a step back and to, to just sit back and kind of survey, you know, get a lay of what's happening in our business. And so I think starting, like you said, sort of with the end in mind to use a frank Frank, Franklin Covey um, right. concept, right? Like really think about where you're going uh, with your business and think about what it's like to bring on board a team member or even two. Um, I, I think it's so important. I am the kind of person though, who I, I would tend to question myself a couple of times on things like, how do I know that this is right? if it's just me doing it, right? And so when I think about bringing someone on board to, to talk with or to work with me, how do I know that the system that I'm creating is actually gonna work when I do bring that person in? Does that make sense? Yeah, so um, I think the fun thing about systems is there's more freedom than people think. It doesn't have to be this really rigid thing. Um, things can change, things can be updated. And so the best thing is feedback. If something's working for you and you feel confident that you can hire, then I say absolutely hire. But it's important to check in with your team members and see if it's working for them. And if it's not, you go back to the drawing board and you come up with another process or a better system. So if I if I backtrack a little bit, so when you say you, you come up with a better system, ask for feedback. But let's say it's still just me and you said, you know, create systems for yourself first, right? Um, would you agree that when you spend the time to create those systems, you have to commit to working from the system so Absolutely. you can tell if it works or not, right? Absolutely. Like um, so you cannot create and abandon. That's for sure. Um, you have got to repeat the process and repeat it and repeat it. And that is how you'll know if it works. Um, a lot of people, let's take standard operating procedures, for example, I always say, start with those, start documenting what you're doing so that you can make it consistent and you can have a reference. When, um, when you, when you speak about standard operating procedures and you talk about documentation specifically, what is, what does that look like? So I am a pen and paper kind of a person. Right. And so I want to write out all of the steps in a process. Um, but does it have to be that way? Like today I saw um, I, I saw a video online where someone hit, I think it was the function key or something like that on a MacBook that starts the microphone. And I think the caption was like, how old were you when you realized that this actually had a purpose? <laughs> And it was so you could just speak into like Google Docs or whatever. And I'm probably telling my age at this point, but um, it was really, it was funny, but it was eye opening for me because I am a pencil and paper type of person. And I'm like, well, wait, maybe all I have to do is just talk about what I'm doing and make it that much more efficient. So you as the expert, I guess this is where I'm going. You as the expert, how do you help your clients start to just think about how do I document my processes, especially if it's just me doing this work myself? So we've um, we've had a lot of pencil and paper clients. Um, the reason why we recommend 
having your standard operating procedures online is for other people, realistically. Um, organization, and once you start to grow, it's easy to just send a document over to a team member. But it is okay to start with that pencil and paper. So the first step, whenever we work with anyone, is a brain dump. We have to get it out of your head onto a Google Doc. You can write it down and scan your pencil and paper over to us, and we'll put it into the um, online document for you. But it doesn't have to be um, one way when you do that first step. So do what's comfortable for you. If that's putting out your processes in your notes app and then converting it later, that's totally okay. Having a session with yourself where you're just writing, that's okay too. Yeah, I, um, I think that that's really good. One of the techniques that I've used in the past, because I think a lot of times when we're trying to document a process, this I'm, I'm gonna speak for me. When, we're, when I'm trying to document a process, I've often been doing it in the moment, right? Instead of let's get through whatever this project is that I'm working on and then kind of go back to it and walk myself through what I did. To me, for me, I know that's sometimes easier than trying to work, stop, document, work, stop, document, right? Absolutely. Um, I think it's good to complete the project to its end and then go back and see what steps did I take to get here. And yeah. it's literally step one, step two, and that is what SOPs are. Yeah, I think that that definitely works best for me. That's kind of how my brain works. Otherwise, it's, I'm never, I feel like I'm never going to get to the end because I keep stopping and starting, stopping and starting. So when you think about especially for solopreneurs and and you told me you you told us to you know think about bringing that team member on board but when you think about the first things that you want to systematize what would some of those things be and then i just thought of another question that i want to ask you about the difference between systemization and automation but we'll come back to that okay <laughs> um so client onboarding and offboarding for sure that is going to be the first thing that a solopreneur should try to automate. Um, and that is just, you're handling all of your clients by yourself. Most people focus on the work and that's what they wanna do. So when you're focused on all these other manual tasks, that email communication back and forth with the client, sending over contracts, invoices, you're essentially playing a virtual assistant and whatever your expert role is. So we recommend client onboarding and offboarding for sure. Okay. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense because it you've you've converted this this person this lead into a client, right? This prospect into a client and your real your first tangible interaction with them is that onboarding process, right? And so to have that documented and it to be seamless and efficient and you get the opportunity to really like I call it kind of shock and awe. Like yeah. when they come on, like they're just super, super happy. It's never what is not anything like what they expected. I think that that's so great. So that's key. Um, so systems versus auto systemization versus automation. What's okay. talk to me. When we think about system, um, systematization, it's going to be taking what you have and putting it into some sort of repeatable system. Um, so this can be documenting your standard operating procedures, so basically what we've talked about. Automation comes in where that's going to be a lot of tech. So how do we take what we documented and remove the human aspect? Um, so let's say part of the process is sending that new client their welcome email. That's going to be part of your system, but how can we automate that? We put it into a client relationship management software like Dubsado, for example. Gotcha. So the systemization of it, of the process comes first, and then you kind of layer in what pieces of that you want to automate. Does that make Right. That so we take right? a look and we say, okay, this is everything that we're working with. What can we do with technology? And that's where automation comes in. We remove as much of the manual labor as we can from that system. Got it. Okay. And so let's say... I am a first year bookkeeper, right? I, I really have just started picking up clients. Um, maybe I have, I'm, I'm within my first five clients or so. Is that the time for me to be thinking about documenting these SOPs or, 
you know, do I need to really just continue to get my, my hands, you know, dirty with the clients for several months before I think about that? You know, should I be a certain, a certain point in my business or as soon as possible? I think it really comes down to a self-assessment. A lot of people start their businesses and they say, I want to build generational wealth. Um, I want to grow a business that can last. Um, and if those are things that you resonate with, then it is important to look ahead. It's important to have a vision. Um, so that means even if you have zero clients, make sure when you show up, that client experience for the first person that you book, it doesn't even look like you're a solopreneur. Um, so I think it just comes down to how you want your business to come across to your clients. And for me, it was always professional. And so I was working on forms and workflows before I had ever booked my first client. So that when I did, I showed up like the expert that I was claiming to be. I love it. I love it. And so you primarily work with service providers, right? Okay. Um, obviously, virtual bookkeepers being uh, being service providers. And so when you start working with um, a business for the first time, like what's it like to work with someone like yourself? Um, it is an eye-opening experience, I would say. Um, a lot of people don't realize the advantages of technology. Um, and some people do, and they're just really scared about it. But we break it down in a way that's digestible, um, a way that our clients understand, because we get that tech is not everybody's ministry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's usually your ministry is what you're an expert in. So for bookkeepers, it's bookkeeping. You don't really care about the other things. Um, so we make sure that we first walk you through understanding that you're not the only one with the problem. So there's some clarity given there. Um, a lot of times people will get into overwhelm and feel like, you know, how did I get into this space? It must just be me. And we stop and say, wait a second, everyone experiences this. So that's the first thing we give clarity. Um, the second thing is, I would say transformational. We show how you can really show up and show out for your clients using technology. Um, there are so many people that have such great services and such great whys, and we really bring that out and see how we can use at technology to our advantage uh, to show that and showcase it. I love that because it when you say, you know, you start thinking to yourself, how did I find myself in this space? I think especially for those uh, bookkeepers who are coming out of a corporate environment, right? Yeah. What they're so used to, they're used to structure, right? They're used to processes and procedures being documented and having been documented by someone long before them, um, right. you know, and having a, a an organized filing system, you know, on the server, that sort of thing. And then they come into the space by themselves and they're starting from scratch, right? And they're thinking to themselves, like, I'm supposed to know how to do this when in reality, is they probably walked into their last job or their last three jobs and all of that systemization and the automation piece of it, you know, working with the ERP systems or whatever, that had already been done, right? And so you're right, like our expertise is processing the financials, right? Processing the transactions, making sense of what uh, the financial story, the picture that's being painted, making sense of all of that. Not necessarily, um, you know, the systems piece of it, right? The automation piece of it, the technology piece of it. How does this all work, right? And so um, I think what you said is absolutely on point. I love that you mentioned to start with when you talk about what you want to systemize, you want to talk, want to look at your onboarding and offboarding process, um, because I, I totally agree with you. And I know that you have mentioned you actually, that's one of the um, the freebies that you have for our audience, right? Like yes. a, a, um, our free client onboarding planner. Uh, so it is something that we, we worked on a lot and we're super excited to offer it, but it allows you to plan your onboarding process in just one weekend. Um, so you sit down after a nice week of business, get you a uh, nice serene area <laughs> because it is a lot to get it all out of your head but we have a very structured workbook that will allow you um, to get that planned out 
enhance what you already have so that you can really show up like the expert that you are advertising to be. I love that. Hard work week, serene space. Yes. You didn't say it, but I'm going to say it like an adult beverage or a cup of coffee for exactly. those of you who don't adult beverage. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it takes, right? <laughs> whatever it takes to get it done. So I love that. So we'll be sure to uh, have a link to that in the show notes. And um, you guys can grab a copy of that um, off of Debbie's website, right? And so um, this has been such a great conversation. I've learned so much. How can our listeners find you? Um, they can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, pretty much all the social platforms at Debbie White and Co. I love it. Love it. So there you have it, guys. We've talked all things systems and automation, especially for solopreneurs who are moving into um, that growth phase of their business and, you know, working their way towards scaling their business. So I know you guys have learned a lot, just like I have. Thank you so much for spending some time with me, Debbie. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me, Kimberly. (laughs) All right, you guys. So that's it for this episode. Thanks so much. Be sure to catch us on the next episode. As always, be proactive, be productive, be profitable, and we'll see you next time. Ciao for now. Well, that's it. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Bookkeeper Basecamp podcast. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to rate, subscribe, and leave us a positive review. This will help other virtual bookkeepers like you find the show and learn how they can become a bookkeeper CEO too. And if you want to hear more from me, be sure to follow Spark Hustle Flow across all social media channels, or you can simply search hashtag Bookkeeper Basecamp. And don't forget, you can always come hang out with us over in the free Bookkeeper Basecamp Facebook group. We'd love to have you there. So that's it for this episode. Remember, as always, be proactive, be productive, be profitable, and we'll see you next time.